If you've ever tried cooking tofu at home and thought it was underwhelming, this video is for you. Today I'm going to share four absolutely amazing tofu recipes that are guaranteed to make you fall in love with this weird little blob. We're going to get started with a crispy marinated tofu. Today we're serving this tofu in lettuce wraps. They're kind of like the lettuce wraps you'd get at P.F. Chang's, only they're actually good. Our tofu marinade starts with soy sauce, which adds savoriness and depth of flavor. Toasted sesame oil brings a nutty, toasty vibe. Rice vinegar for a delicate acidity and a bit of brown sugar, which will help the tofu caramelize in the oven. For our spices, we're using white pepper, garlic powder, ground ginger, and five spice powder. If you've never cooked with Chinese five spice powder before, I really cannot recommend it enough. It adds kind of a sweet warmth that just makes tofu taste so much better. And of course we need a pinch of salt. Give everything a shake. Making a weird expression while you do so is optional, but highly recommended. Now, if we just chopped up some regular tofu and let it hang out in the marinade for a few hours, the marinade wouldn't really penetrate into the tofu. That's because tofu is water heavy, it's not very porous, and so it doesn't typically absorb marinades very well. My solution is to use previously frozen tofu that's been defrosted. When you freeze tofu, the water inside of it turns to ice crystals, which expand in size and create little holes throughout the tofu. And when the tofu thaws, the ice melts, but the holes remain. You can see the thawed tofu is much denser and has a lot of micro holes in the surface. These make it easier for the tofu to soak up flavors from the marinade. Thanks, science! We can remove even more water from the defrosted tofu with just a few simple steps. So first, give the tofu a good squeeze and then cut it vertically into four slabs. See, look at how many spongy pockets there are in this tofu. Wrap the slabs in a dish towel and weight everything down with the heaviest cookbook you can find for about 10 minutes. Once the tofu has been pressed, you'll slice each slab into cubes. We're ready to marinate the tofu. And another tip is to use a marinade that is not that liquidy. Again, tofu is pretty watery, so it's not gonna do it any favors to coat it in a bunch of liquid. Instead, you want a marinade that's on the viscous side because then it will really cling to the tofu instead of slip right off of it. Give the marinade another shake because the ingredients might have settled. And I like to use a Ziploc bag for marinating the tofu. It's the easiest way to toss the tofu and make sure every cube gets nicely coated in the marinade. You can marinate the tofu for up to four hours, but I'm gonna marinate for just 30 minutes. Since we use those other techniques, the tofu is really gonna be able to absorb all the delicious flavor in the marinade in just a short period of time. A few minutes later, all right, final step. Once the tofu is done marinating, we'll add a tablespoon of arrowroot powder. This is gonna help the tofu get nice and crispy in the oven. I'm lining my sheet pan with parchment paper because it makes cleaning up a little bit easier. And try to give each tofu cube some room because they won't get crispy if you crowd them together. You're gonna bake this in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, then flip the tofu. To be honest, I flip it with my fingers. It's not peak kitchen safety etiquette, I know, but the spatula takes more time and I like to live on the edge. Now you're gonna bake these for another 10 to 13 minutes. Can you hear how crispy this is? Ah! It's chewy on the inside, but has this nice crispy caramelization on the outside from the sugar. It's got amazing flavor from the five spice powder. And now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to serve it. The sauce for our lettuce wraps starts with a generous amount of almond butter. It's definitely easier if you're using the liquidy part of the almond butter jar that oozes off your spoon like some smooth, sexy jazz music, instead of the crusty bit at the bottom. To that, we'll add some soy sauce or tamari sriracha, a bit of Chinese black vinegar, one of my favorite ever ingredients, toasted sesame oil, and agave to balance all of the flavors. We're also shaving some garlic and ginger right in there, and this is gonna give our sauce a lot of punch. We're just about ready to assemble these lettuce wraps. I like to add some rice noodles that I've chopped up as well as some crunchy carrots and cucumbers. Add the marinated tofu on top and then drizzle that delicious almond butter sauce on there. Okay, okay, it's a little too thick to drizzle, so you might have to goop it on there. But seriously, if these lettuce wraps look good to you, just know that they taste even better. This is phenomenal. The almond sesame sauce goes so well with the flavors of the marinated tofu. I could eat this every day. I don't really know what else to say about it, so let's move on to our second recipe. Next up, we're making an Indian spiced pan fried tofu. It is so flavorful, but comes together really quickly, so it is perfect for your weeknight meals. 
We don't need to freeze and defrost the tofu like we did in that last recipe, but we will press the slabs to get rid of some of that excess water so the tofu can crisp up better. While the tofu hangs out, we'll make our spice blend and there are just a few ingredients, but they give the tofu so much flavor. Garam masala, which is an amazing Indian spice blend that adds a subtly sweet, warm, and almost floral flavor, ground cumin, turmeric, and just a dash or two of Kashmiri chili powder for a little bit of heat, and some black pepper and salt. The tofu is done pressing, so now we'll slice our slabs into half inch cubes. Oh, and we need to add a couple more ingredients to our spice mix. Nutritional yeast, you just need a tablespoon. I don't recommend skipping it because it adds this amazing savory depth of flavor. And you could just pan fry the tofu with the spices and the nooch, but if you want it to get crispy and almost taste like it's been deep fried without doing the deep frying, it helps to add a starch. And in my many, many, many tests of frying tofu, cornstarch works the best when you are frying tofu on the stove. Add your tofu cubes to a large bowl and toss in that spice starch mixture. Be gentle when mixing so you don't break up or smash the tofu. I find using my hands or a silicone spoonula works best. Grab a large nonstick frying pan and heat it over medium high, ideally in slow-mo because it looks cool. Add in three tablespoons of any neutral flavored oil and once it starts to shimmer, go ahead and add the tofu. I like to use a tool like the spider to add the tofu because I do not enjoy hot oil splattering on my arms. But if you enjoy that, go ahead. Feel free to toss the tofu in from a very high distance. Just kidding. Try to spread the tofu out in an even layer and separate the pieces as much as you can. After about six to eight minutes, they should be looking beautifully golden, which means it's time to flip them. A small spatula is the easiest way to do this. Give them another four minutes or so and then transfer the tofu to a paper towel lined surface and hit them with a pinch of salt. The paper towel is gonna soak up a lot of the excess oil so your tofu is extra crispy, but not greasy. That is unbelievably delicious. It's cheesy, it's crunchy, it's got those amazing warming Indian spices. And best of all, it is really easy to throw together. And now I'm gonna show you how I like to serve it with dinner. Cook up your favorite grain, any will work. I have brown rice today. Add it to a bowl with your tofu. You'll need a sauce of some sort to bring this together. I really like this with raita, which is an Indian yogurt sauce to complement the flavors in the tofu. The right the recipe is linked in the description box. And pickled onions on top for some flavor and a little crunch plus chopped mint and cilantro. The tofu goes so well with the raita. It's like an Indian inspired party for the taste buds. But honestly, you can use this tofu in so many ways, in salads and grain bowls and wraps, you name it. In a few minutes, I'm gonna share my absolute favorite tofu recipe from the past year. But before then, we'll make a very quick and easy recipe that you can meal prep for your weekly lunches. And that is vegan egg salad. That might sound like an oxymoron, but I promise you this has some serious eggy flavors thanks to a few key ingredients, and it doesn't require any cooking. I'm using firm tofu, and while that presses, we're gonna make our dressing. Grab a large bowl and you'll add in some vegan mayo that's gonna give us a nice creamy base, Dijon mustard, dill relish or sweet pickle relish, and nutritional yeast for a bit of savory flavor. We're also gonna add in some spices, most importantly, kalanamak, which is also known as black salt. That's gonna give our egg salad some genuinely eggy flavors. Beware though, if you've never used it, it does smell funky, like really, really, really funky, but it does mellow out when it's mixed in with everything else, so don't worry. Add in some paprika, turmeric for color, and a few cracks of pepper. Give it all a whisk. Our tofu is done pressing, so now we'll cut it into pieces. As you'll notice, I'm cutting the tofu into the tiniest little cubes. The reason I'm doing this is because it's going to really improve the texture of the egg salad. If I were just to crumble the tofu like I do for a tofu scramble, once it marinates in the dressing, it would kind of turn into a monotonous mush. And this method is actually going to better mimic the texture of a classic egg salad. It takes a few extra minutes, but in my opinion, totally worth it, especially given how easy this recipe is overall. We need just a few more ingredients to get that classic American egg salad flavor just right. A quarter cup of chopped scallions or chives, quarter cup of fresh dill, and a tablespoon of capers. I'm chopping all of these by hand with a knife, but if you wanna make this lightning quick, you can add these ingredients to a food processor and pulse together. Add these to the dressing, give it another mix, and now it's time to add in the tiny, adorable tofu cubes. 
Now you wanna let this marinate in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Give the tofu a chance to absorb all the delicious flavors in the dressing. My favorite way to serve this egg salad is on a slice of nice local sourdough bread alongside some avocado mash and lots of good fixings. A juicy tomato, some cukes, pickled onions for a bit of crunch, and a nice generous scoop of the egg salad. This looks so freaking good. Look at this loaded sandwich, I'm so excited. Okay, where shall I attack it from? No, that's a damn fine sandwich. It tastes so much like classic egg salad. It's creamy and indulgent. So if you are feeling nostalgic for your childhood or want a delicious lunch that you can make ahead for the week, definitely try this out. This braised tofu might be my favorite tofu dish of the past year. The tofu is somewhere between crispy and chewy and the Chinese inspired sauce is sweet and spicy. Just like the lady romance novels I find at the free little libraries in my neighborhood. We're using extra firm tofu for this recipe. I like to cut the block in half, then cut each half into fairly thin squares, about a third of an inch thick. We're gonna press those for 10 minutes and in the meantime, we'll do the rest of our prep. For our aromatics, we've got a pretty classic trio in Cantonese cooking, some scallions that I'm slicing on a bias, four cloves of finely chopped garlic, and an inch of finely chopped ginger. Also, I'm gonna slice a red bell pepper because it looks pretty, tastes great, and it's good for you. Now for our braising liquid, it begins with three tablespoons of soy sauce. I like to use Chinese light soy sauce because this is a Chinese inspired recipe, but any regular soy sauce from the grocery store is also fine. A heaping tablespoon of black vinegar, the same bottle I used earlier in the almond butter sauce, as well as some organic brown sugar. Szechuan chili flakes bring a medium heat and a rich flavor. You could also use milder chili flakes like gochugaru or red pepper flakes if that's all you have. And to round things off, we are adding some five spice powder and white pepper, two of my favorite spices. Give everything a shake and our tofu should be done pressing by now. I really like using this square shape for the braised tofu because it's thinner than your standard tofu cube. So it's going to crisp up and get golden brown in the pan more quickly. It also has more surface area than a cube. So once you put it in the braising liquid, it's going to be able to more quickly absorb all of that flavor. Heat up a large nonstick frying pan over medium high heat for about two minutes, then add in a couple tablespoons of oil and let that heat for 30 seconds. As carefully as you can, add the tofu to the hot oil and arrange it in a single layer without them touching one another. Otherwise, things will get steamy real quick, just as they do in the next romance novel I accidentally picked up at my local free little library. If your pan is too small to fit all the tofu, make sure to cook it in two batches. When the tofu is golden brown, about five to eight minutes, give it a flip, and about four to five minutes later, it should be looking perfect, so transfer it to a paper towel lined surface and hit it with another pinch of salt. Now we'll use the same pan to cook our aromatics. A really fun flavor booster in this recipe is to use Chinese chili oil or the oil from Chinese Chili Crisp to saute the aromatics instead of like your standard cooking oil. It adds umami and heat and it's delicious. I'm using the oil from Momofuku Chili Crunch, but any Chinese chili oil or crisp works well. Give the garlic, ginger, and scallions a minute or two in the chili oil. Then you'll add in the bell pepper strips and cook those for just two minutes or until crisp tender. Now we're ready for the braising liquid. You're gonna bring this liquid to a boil and then simmer for five minutes. In the meantime, we'll whip up our cornstarch slurry. It's just cornstarch and cold water whisked together really well. You can also use arrowroot powder. Pour the slurry into the pan and it's gonna thicken the sauce up pretty quickly, just 45 to 60 seconds, so don't take your eyes off this. Carefully add your tofu back into the pan and gently toss it around so each piece is coated in this very, very sexy sauce. Lower the heat and braise this all together for about 10 minutes. Serve over rice and to finish, add your scallion greens, roasted sesame seeds, and a drizzle of toasted sesame oil. As much as I love crispy tofu, I think I love braised tofu even more. It's unbelievably savory, it's chewy, it's saucy. And if you love a saucy tofu dish like this, you're gonna love my tofu curry. You can find the recipe here. And all the recipes from today's video are linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching, bye.